In this video, I'm going to build a dining room table out of hardwood floors. I am going to use three quarter inch plywood underneath it and actually glue and nail the flooring to the three quarter inch plywood. I use inch and a half uh, L cleats for the flooring nailer. I will also be using three boxes of unfinished four inch oak, red oak flooring that I uh, got from a friend of mine. Yeah, you know, I got that for free. I have about $100 in the build. I had to buy the plywood. And remember, if you like the content of this video, please hit the like button and then subscribe and hit the bell for future notifications as to when I put out a new video. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy the video. Okay, the first thing you need to do is start with a 4x8 sheet of, I'm using birch plywood. You could virtually use any plywood that you want though. Three quarters of an inch thick. It has to be at least three quarters. And then these are my three bundles of hardwood flooring. You, know, you need a chop saw and a table saw, a skill saw, a couple of clamps, and some straight edges to cut your uh, plywood straight. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is cut my bundles open and see what lengths I have. All right, there I found one full length in the bundle, and it is six, 83 inches long. I want the table to be 6-6, six, six. so this will be my starter board. What I'm going to do is rip the groove off so I have a smooth edge at the edge of the table. I'm going to do that at table saw. I've got my table saw set up to rip this 4 inches wide, which that's with the tongue. So that will cut the quarter inch off of this side and leave a flush side all the way down it. All right, and what you end up with is a smooth side on one side. All right, next, I'm gonna mark the board 6-6. Six, six. I'll measure what the base of my miter saw is, and I will add that to my measurement here, which it's just under one and three eighths. Now I'll clamp my board in place. By the way, I have this raised up on some uh, inch and a half wood just to keep it up high so I can uh, put my clamps on. You wanna set the depth of your saw to where it just barely cuts through the plywood and then start your cut. Now you want to measure to make sure everything's straight and it's fine. Okay, now I'm gonna cut the length of the board here. I made a little uh, jig the size of my circular saw. And I'm gonna place it right here. Put a mark where I need to put the plywood. I'm cutting this 40 inches wide. Now I'm gonna place my plywood and clamp it. What I'm going to do next is I have some furring strips. I'm going to nail them alongside here to have something to butt up against. All right, what I'm gonna be doing next is spreading glue. It's a, a actually urethane wood glue adhesive. I'm gonna spread that over half of the plywood at a time and then start installing the boards. 
all the boards will be cut about an eighth inch larger than the plywood so I can trim it down after it's done. And like I said, I put a board here on the end to butt up against so that's all flush and then on the back side here. All right, now it's time to start installing wood. Take the first board, butt it up to there. On the first board is the only place you want a top nail. So, nail the back of it. Now we're going to use a flooring nailer and this will make sure it holds together extremely well. Get as close to the end as you can and nail about every six to eight inches. All right, then start nailing your other boards in. Just grab boards at random and make sure you have random joints. You don't want any joints that are side by side or what we call H'd up. Now you want to spread some more glue. Now we're going to start installing again. Okay, I've ripped the edge off of my end boards here. Uh, I took the tongue off and it'll give me just enough overhang that I could trim off the uh, excess with a router bit. And it'll be trimmed straight to the plywood. So now I'm gonna nail these last boards on. I got the cut, top cut. Uh, I did end up uh, having to cut a little bit off. I forgot to uh, leave the tongue off, to cut the tongue off of this end. Uh, and uh, you can't glue to a tongue on this. So uh, I just went ahead and cut it off. Since I had the circular saw out again, I went ahead and cut the uh, edges down and trimmed them up rather than use a router. And I've done that all the way around. All right, I've also cut two 
inch and a half strips for the sides for the edges the banding on it and two inch and a half 43 inches long for the sides uh, now I'm going to miter them and put them on before I do the glue up I want to uh, make sure that all these fit so I'm going to line them up and clamp them on all right I've got that side mitered up now I'm going to mark this side and I do that with a razor blade I see where it's going to line up and mark the 45 on it. Then I'll take it off and cut it at the miter saw. Okay, now I've got this last one cut. I'm just fitting it right now to make sure everything fits good. Okay, now it's time to glue it. Because it is hardwood floors, the back has ridges on it in some areas. So what you wanna do is glue as much as you can and then I'm going to uh, brad nail it to the edge also and then fill the hole. Okay, now it's time to do filling. Uh, inevitably in hardwood floors you'll have uh, little dents and just little places that are missing wood. So you want to take care of all that before you start sanding. And then you'll have to continue after you sand it. So I'm going to go ahead and fill all the holes now. Okay, I've got everything filled. Now I'm getting ready to sand it. Okay, I'm going to start out with a 60 grit. And I'm going to do this the way that we do hardwood floors. I'm going to start out cutting it diagonally so it gets these ridges down. And then I'll go this way on it. But right now I want to just cut all the ridges down. One thing I forgot to mention is that when you're using a belt sander like this, do not let it sit. Keep it moving the whole time. If you let it sit, it's going to dig in. Even though this is a cheap Harbor Freight belt sander, it still does a good job, but you have to keep it moving. And now you start sanding with the grain. This time's a lot easier to do. You just want to basically take out all the scratches from the uh, grit, that grit sandpaper. All right, now I'm going to take 60 grit sandpaper on a palm sander and sand the whole thing, and then I'll do the edges this time too. Okay, I just switched to a brand new 80 grit, and now I'm going to sand it, the whole thing, in 80 grit. Okay, now it's time to uh, router the top edge. I'm going to use a, a quarter inch roundover bit. Uh, I don't like to use anything bigger than that, just in case you go through to the uh, grooves in the back of the uh, hardwood flooring. Okay, I've got my, I cut my table legs uh, 32 inches for right now. I cut four each for each leg. And luckily I had just enough to be able to do that and still cut the skirting all in one piece. You want the skirting to be in one piece. I'm gonna take these to the table saw. I'm gonna rip the tongue off, or the tongue and the groove off. It'll leave me about uh, three and three quarter inches uh, by three inches thick. I'll cut the final width down later. Okay, first thing I wanna do is set my height on the blade. You wanna make it to where just the curve clears the wood. Then on this side, I wanna set it to exactly four inches. And then I'm gonna cut all 16 pieces. I'm gonna cut them down to two and seven eighths. 
right, the next thing you want to do is pick out the green that you want on the outside of the leg. One side, the edge is going to have quarter sawn grain. So they're all going to be pretty much the same. So what you want to do is pick out the edges that you want on the outer edge. Whether you want it to be a straight grain like that or a cathedral type grain like this. You know, you have to pick out a total of eight legs. So basically just lay them out. I'm going to put these two together and these two, one on each side. Oh, I got one more to pick out. These two here. So there's my four outside of the leg. Now what we're going to do is take these and glue them together like this. Yeah, you know, so that this part here is on the outside and they're together on the inside. Because this is flooring, you may end up with little gaps like this. You can take care of those later. Very easy to take care of. We're gonna glue these. Okay, I've got everything all straightened out. I have plastic down. Uh, the only thing I had that was, I don't have a regular work assembly table yet. I put plastic down on the back side of the table. Now I'm gonna glue this up. All right, since these are the center ones, I am gonna just flip them over, line them up, and these, like I said, these are the, for the center. So I'm gonna line them all the way up, get them nice and even, and shoot them with a staple. Okay, that's set over a half hour. It should be good to go now. Okay, now it's time to glue the outer pieces together. Now time to clamp it up. All right, now what I want to do is take one side of these that they, you know, since they're all glued up, I'm going to take one side and sand it down smooth, get all the glue off of it. That way I could run it through the table saw and cut it to the thickness I want. What you want to do now is cut it down and you want to take a little bit off of both sides. So what you're going to do, it's three inches wide. So set it for two and seven eighths and cut off of one side, your flat side. Okay, now that you have those cut, you want to take the best side, the side that you sanded, and take just a hair off of it. Okay, what you want to do now is the side that you already cut off on the face, you want to put that up against the fence and cut it down to the same width as your other one, which is just a sixteenth under two and three quarters. When you get done, what you end up with is eight veneers that you can use for another project. They're all about eighth inch thick uh, and uh, approximately 31 inches long. Now it's time to sand all my parts. Because this is flooring, you may have some areas like this that need to be filled. While I'm waiting on the filler to dry over there, I'm gonna go ahead and sand a skirt. Okay, while the patch is drying, I'm going to go sand the other sides of it. Okay, what I'm going to do now, 
I've set all my legs up in place. I've already got them sanded and I want to put a taper on the outside of each one. But what I want to do is see where I want that taper to begin. Put my girding on here where it goes and then I want to mark about a quarter inch and that's where I'm going to put a 16th inch curve all the way around each leg and then I'll taper it from about two inches a side down to about a half inch maybe a little bit less you can only go so far because you don't want to get into where the uh, relief cuts on the back of the uh, flooring are so you can only go so far I like to set all of my plane sawn on the outside and the quarter sawn boards where it's pieced together on the end that's just my own personal preference that's where I'll make this one and I'll cut this side and this side. So I marked both of those with an X and I'll do the same thing all the way around. Okay. All right, what I ended up doing, I made a jig tapering jig cut a piece of plywood and then i set my taper up on the jig itself before i put this part in i set the i wanted it to just start here about two inches down and then end up about five eighths of an inch over here so then i stapled this to to the uh piece of plywood and then i put a stop block on the very end so now i'm going to start uh cutting my tapers what you want to do when you cut your tapers, you want to make sure that one of the X's is on the bottom. That way when you rotate it to make your next taper, it's still a flat on the bottom and not a taper. You want to put one of the X's on the bottom and then just turn your saw on and start to taper. Now you just want to do the rest of them. Now we're going to go ahead and sand everything again. <laughs> quarter inch round over same as I did on the ta uh, top side of the table on all the legs Okay, I've switched to a chamfer bit and I'm just going to chamfer the edges so that it never gets broken. I'm using the Rockler beadlock system to put loose tenon joinery into the uh, rails and the legs this is what it looks like and this jig will cut so i've marked a center line where i want my ten the center of my tenon to be and now i'll just clamp it on make sure it's tight up against there and there's a a line it's uh i don't know if you can see that in the film or not but uh there's a uh, marking line right here and you line that up to the pencil line that you have on your uh, workpiece and then just clamp it down it's got two wing nuts this is set up for a 3 8 inch drill bit and you drill three holes then you slide this over 
and drill two holes and that'll be set for the beadlock tenon to go into it. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started making them. Now you just unloosen these, slide it over to the B slot, tighten them back down, and then do the two center ones. Now you want to take this off and clean it out. Now you want to do the same thing with the other leg. I have set this marking gauge to the exact depth that I, or uh, spot that I want this put on. On this, it will be, center mark will be right there. All right, I've got my leg clamped in. I've got my mark made. All I do is line that line up center right there and then clamp it. Make sure it's tight. Make sure this is in the A position. There's an A and a B. A is this way. Now you just drill it. Now you just slide it over to the B position, lock it in place, and drill it. Now you have to clean it out. You'll sometimes need, need to take a chisel to get some of these pieces out of here. Okay, I went, and went through and marked all of my uh, matches with the legs and the apron that goes around the skirting, you know, with the corresponding number. You know, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Well, I'm sorry, folks, I missed the glue up. Uh, I thought I hit the record button and I didn't, so uh, it did not record uh, me gluing all this up. It took me uh, about 30, 35 minutes to glue it all up. But I'm sorry for that, but it happens. Now we're just going to let it set. All right, the glue has had time to set up, and now I'm going to drill for Forstner, or figure eights with a Forstner bit. Okay, I'm, I've already uh, pre-drilled the holes for the uh, screws for the figure eights. Alright, now it's time to set the uh, legs back up on the bottom of the table and screw it to that. Alright, I've got my uh, table legs set up here and square. I It's square all the way around. Now I'm going to pre-drill my holes and put my screws in to hold it to the table. This concludes this build of this table. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like it, subscribe to it, and hit the bell for future notifications when I put out a new video. Thank you. At the beginning of this video, I told you that I was going to let you know how to source hardwood flooring for building stuff for free to near. I mean, the most I think anybody would charge you is two bucks a foot, especially if you're buying most of their, what they have in stock. Yeah, you know, their excess that they have, you know, normally they have one or two boxes of wood. Uh, and it may all be oak. It may be hickory. It could be anything. You're, you know, you have no idea what you'd be buying. But if you offer to buy all of it or most of it, uh, they would give you a good deal on it. Uh, some of it may be engineered. Some of it is three-quarter inch hardwood, which that's what I used to build this table. Uh, uh, I was lucky enough to get it from a guy that does sand and finish, which I stopped doing sand and finish floors quite a few years ago. I figured I'd breathe enough dust in. Uh, anyway, uh, I got this... You know, the flooring itself I got for free. Uh, and if you know a sand and finish guy or you can find one, uh, that's one of the better sources to get good, solid three-quarter inch hardwood floors. And it may be a lot of two and a quarter inch, but if you install it the way that I installed this, you don't have much weight otherwise you're talking a two inch board two and a quarter maybe and that that's i've done that before put them together but that's a lot of work but anyway if you go to uh hardwood flooring uh suppliers in your area they would be more than happy to get rid of their stock they will charge you a little bit of money but uh normally it's not very much 
uh, they could have from, you know, three boxes of miscellaneous lumber uh, up to a hundred boxes. Depends on how big the store is and how big their warehouse. But they're always wanting to clear out their warehouse to make room for other stuff. And if they have a bunch of this flooring sitting around that's in the way, they're usually more than happy to get rid of it. And like I said, you can pick it up. Uh, uh, I know guys that have bought it from the store that I used sub to uh, for a buck a foot. Yeah, but uh, the other thing is a lot of times guys will take it home. You know, whatever's left over on a job, they'll go ahead and take it home because they're told by the stores to not leave anything on the job other than maybe one and a half boxes, you know, because uh, they normally cannot return anything under a box or actually most of the time they can't return anything under three boxes. Just remember, it's hard for these stores to sell, you know, 20 to 50 feet of hardwood and normally they can't get more of the same stuff and more than likely the people don't like something that somebody else are you know I mean the, they don't have the same styles that other people do they don't have the same taste in wood so the odds on them selling it it just ends up sitting in their warehouse forever I mean I used to bring this stuff home and uh, after a while I got so much accumulated I actually started burning it. You know, I didn't have any way to get rid of it. Uh, you know, I put it advertised on Craigslist, but at the time I lived so far out of the city, nobody wanted to drive to the country to get it. You know, another source is get on Craigslist, get on Marketplace, and tell people that you're looking for, you know, just a few boxes of hardwood. And a lot of these guys are more than happy to get rid of it they have any still in their house or you may be able to set it up where they give you a call when they get it you know get some in stock have some left over off of a job and it's going to take you as your gas to get over there and back you know like i said these guys i've thrown many of it away and i burned a ton of it another thing you might end up getting if you're lucky enough is getting some exotic wood uh i've gotten bubenga i've gotten brazilian cherry i've gotten australian cypress uh i mean there's a multitude of different hardwood floorings that people buy that's why it's hard for them to get rid of extra boxes is because no one wants what they chose you know their tastes are totally different and you'll get a mixture of most anything from three quarter inch down to uh, three eighths inch engineered. But the engineered is usually, you could actually build with that. I have built with pre-finished wood and is, if it's square edge, they butt together pretty good. Uh, you can plane it, but I haven't had a planer in quite a few years. Uh, that's why I did what I did with this. I didn't want to spend the price of getting surface three sides, you know. But, uh, you know, if you get engineered, most of that is square edge, so everything butts together very tight. It's milled actually a little bit better than this wood here. It's more precise because it's made to be a finished product. This is not, you know, so there's a lot more imperfections in this than there is in uh, pre-finished flooring. Don't get me wrong, there are some imperfections in it, but if you get enough of it of one color, you could go ahead and build small projects with it. You know, a lot of times uh, stores will have, you know, like their warehouse clearance sales. And during a warehouse clearance sale, they will, you know, discount their hardwood lumber or flooring that they have drastically you know you can pick it up for you know if they're asking two bucks tell them you'll buy it all for a for a buck a foot you know i mean it, it's very much worth your while if you have room to store it so anyway i installed flooring for right at 40 years you know i finally had to get off get off my knees i've known plenty of contractors that will sell to the public flooring that they have left over or whatever so a lot of times they'll just give it to you they want to get rid of it and if they leave it on the job 
the store, the people will call the store wanting their money back. So they're going to deduct that money from the installation that they were supposed to install because they got paid for that installation if they took the wood off the job. You know, they just want to get rid of it. But anyway, I hope you like this video and I'm planning on making more videos uh, just like this out of flooring or uh, since you know hardwood is so damn expensive right now I prefer to make things out of flooring uh, the plywood that I used uh, cost me like 60 bucks I think the whole table I have about a hundred dollars into it and it's 41 inches wide by 6 4 long you know, so anyway if you like this video uh, hit the like button and then uh, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to see other videos that I make, go ahead and hit the bell for notifications as to when I bring out my next video. Anyway, you have a nice day and thanks for watching.